Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 13 of Catman Do FBA Live. Um, awkward pause. <laughs> yes, brought to you by Mountain Lightning. 68 cents over at Walmart right now. So go to Wally World and pick up as much as you can. I have four in the fridge and ten on the floor. Um, <laughs> uh, shush. Tired of hearing about NASCAR. <laughs> yes, we have a race going on this weekend, and my girlfriend's all excited about it, yet I can't see myself watching cars go around in circles while eating hot dogs and drinking beer and belching and everything else. Um, not even being able to hear myself because of 50 plus cars on one track at one time. So, um, <laughs> welcome to the show. Um, I guess today's topic is really going to be um, more along the lines of what Marcella put up on her Fabiac forum uh, for uh, a contest she had. What makes face painting great for you, or um, what do you what do you get out of face painting? Um, why do you like it so much? What are the memorable things about it? Um, so I'm going to go into that. But first, we got to show you our uh, newest addition to the family. Come here, Lucy. This is Lucy. She likes giving kisses and licking all the salt off my skin. She is an adorable, purebred, three-year-old Pomeranian uh, that we got from a person who was moving to Gatlinburg and needed to find a good home. So, for 40 bucks, we got a great addition to the family. Yeah, she was cheap, but she's not cheap. Mm, yes, I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm. All right, go back to Mommy. Here you go. <laughs> so, um, as you see on the screen, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit why I th love my job, and then I want you guys to call in and tell me what you love about the job uh, of face painting. Uh, what makes it memorable for you, um, you know, your most memorable story. Um, so, to start off. Uh, I've always loved face painting as a little kid and when I finally got the opportunity to do it myself what made it so great was seeing the smiles on the faces of the kids and I know I've said this before you can people say that kids will be happy no matter what they get that is not true uh, I have seen some really bad face paintings and some really really deep frowns on kids faces because of the face painting they think they're getting something great nobody's paying attention to them because it looks so bad or they're talking behind the kids back about how bad it looks um, quality is everything and I've always been in it for the quality and because of the quality I get some of the greatest reactions out of people not just from the kids or the adults that I paint but from the general people that are around the area so you know being able to put a smile on somebody's face who I didn't paint but because of my painting is really memorable and great for me and that is what lifts my spirits um, as I've also told people before if I was in it for the money I wouldn't be in Bristol Virginia I'd be Hollywood Orlando Atlanta New York somewhere where you know I could make a lot of money doing my thing but it's the joy that I have and bringing something new to an area that hasn't seen this quality of work that makes it so much more memorable for me um, uh, what else can I say um, working with certain groups of people like what I posted is my um, favorite thing on that post in the Fabiac forum by Marcella was a picture of a mother and son that I painted as tigers now the boy he's autistic and he loves big cats and if you've ever dealt with autistic kids it is a wide spectrum they could be from 
almost normal to really uh, reclusive kids. And this one, he's a little bit out there, but he's also a little bit of a recluse. But when it came down to painting him, it was something completely different. <coughs> he loved big cats, and you wouldn't believe how much of a difference and how much happiness this gave him to be what he loves so much, and that's being a big cat. So, painted him up, had a great time, took some pictures of him and his mom together, took some pictures individually. Um, mom had a great time with it too, and she loved the whole painting. But it was really great to do that, and because of stepping up to this and doing it with an autistic person, um, it really got me into doing more. And I actually created two books with the help of several, um, quite a few artists from around the world. Uh, there's Blue for Autism, and then there's Blue for Autism, the second edition. Um, the second edition book has more. Uh, I'll put the links onto the YouTube channel where I will be posting this up. Um, you can go and you can purchase each book. And uh, all the money goes directly to Autism Speaks. I don't see a single cent from the sale of those books. I don't care to. The money is not for me. It goes straight to them. So I'm cutting out the middleman and just directing it straight to them. Um, ah, itchy nose. Not good for TV. <laughs> so, um, what else can I say? Uh, what else was memorable for me? Traveling around, getting to meet new people, getting to meet like-minded individuals. Um, painting a girl and having her as my girlfriend now. <laughs> You know, that's not, that's not really um, it, that's not really something that I would. Well, it's memorable, but it's not something that you know you you know you go around talking about all the time. Um, <laughs> but just really, the memorable things are the people that you connect with on a day to day basis whenever you're doing your job. You know. Um, of course, you're always going to have those not so memorable people at events, and you know you're always going to have that one complainer out of the whole group of people, no matter who it is, even if it's a child. Um, you just got to look past that and look at the positive aspect of it. Um, reading stories from other face painters who relate with you is really great too, and that is something that you need to see. And I'll post a link to that group on the. Um, YouTube channel too on the YouTube link um, so I don't know that that's what makes my job special and happy is you know the people I make happy make me happy and stuff um, anybody want to call in and give their story <laughs> the, number the number is popped up on the screen Two seven six six nine six seven four nine one. Talk to me live. If you're scared, put in the chat you're scared. <laughs> All right. So um, while I'm waiting for somebody to call in to tell me their story, um, I guess. I should probably do a tutorial, but I don't have any of my paints out. And, uh, can, can you go to the car and get my paints? Yes. Hold on. I think, I think the front, I think the driver's door is unlocked. But just in case. Yes, I can do it from here. I got my car parked out in the front. <laughs> yeah, John, you're scared. You're always scared. You've never called in before in your life. <laughs> but um, yes it is a Toyota how did you know is the sound that good do I need to tone down my voice is it too overbearing too loud do you have your speakers set on uh, minimum volume just to hear me in a loud voice <laughs> okay 
Perfect. I can't hear myself because if I do, I'll get a feedback loop that'll like screw things up. All right. Oh, she's got, she's got my paints. So, ah, uh, uh, okay. My big old bag of paints, <sighs> right here. Uh, okay, so one side I'll put off these. I'll have her. No, hey, no, put that down. I got something more important for you to do. Okay. Water. Yep. Water. Where where's my water please? Yeah. Alright. You can chat it if you want and I'll read it on the screen. That's no problem. Um but I'm going to do a tutorial, and I need an idea of what to do. What do you guys want to see me do? You two people who are watching me, what do you want to see me do? You can still type it up and watch the tutorial. Ugh. Baby wipes. I'm just looking. <sighs> Get out my paints. Get out my brushes. Get out my final seal. My next door neighbor has a black cat that keeps getting outside. Whenever they catch him, finally gets some loving, gets some food, and then runs back outside and escapes for another month or so. It's hilarious. So John's thing is if you're not watching this live and you're watching the recording in the chat he's saying that um, he was watching someone face paint and was asked to help uh, and he never did it before but he fell in love that very night um, after he started doing it. So, uh, But John himself is more of a special effects guru, newbie. Max. So, Lucy, here's your bone. Uh, here's your uh, bone. Max and Lucy are now fighting over the big mammoth bone. Your bone. Your bone. So, <laughs> you might hear some growling, some yipping, some different things. Um, all right. So, got my water. Got my spoon jaws. Water, paint. Hey, baby. Okay, now <coughs> I may have to adjust this over a little bit. And uh, let me see real quick. Ow. Hey. Lift your head up. Can, can you see her? Can you see her? <laughs> Ow. She smacked me. <laughs> Alright. Uh, don't know how we're going to do this. So, I have an idea. Um, can you get me my tripod over there?
And can you check the tops? Nope. That one. Uh, there should be a square uh, piece that fits into here. Is there a square piece in there? Nope. There's no square pieces? Nope. All right. Oh, that was Jan, not Jan, John, whatever, I'm sorry, okay, fine. John was the one that said, uh, uh, Jan was the one that said what I said. Uh, John is correcting me, and uh, I'm sorry, you both have J's in your names, and... Uh, you can't read. <laughs> Yes, Jan even says she uh, knows where I'm coming from. Okay, um, hold on real quick. I need to find that little piece. And while I'm doing that, uh, I'll, I'll either keep talking or you can talk to my girlfriend. Um, I need to get out real quick. I need to find that little piece. All right, give, give me just a second here. Grab yourself a drink, popcorn, soda. Whatever. I know I have a piece around here somewhere. There it is. Got it. All right. So, okay, this is. <laughs> okay. So this is going to kind of screw up the camera for a second here. Uh, screw it in. Let me just stick it back up here for a second. Try to get this tripod. This is the problem with doing stuff live. You should be more prepared. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm spontaneous. Yeah. I'm Mr. Spontaneous. Get this all the way up. Lock that down. Pull out one leg each. <laughs> Hold on. This, this should go really good okay so just like that and then okay now let me take this and Ba, 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 ba. Take my leg out. You look funny. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, earthquake. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys want to see me tutorial? <laughs> Since I'm so prepared for this. Spiders. Shush. You're my model. You're nothing more. Hush. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, we're on my live show, not Faba TV. Talk about me, don't talk about Faba. I gave up last week's video because of uh, Margie. <laughs> am 
My phone number is not working. Uh -oh. Okay. There it goes. It's working now. Hey, I must have dialed it wrong. <laughs> what are you doing over there? What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, what's happening? Uh, well, I'm going to do a tutorial, but uh, I don't hey, know what to do. I'm looking at your girlfriend and watching you bend it all over the couch. I might as well call in and say hi. <laughs> well, I was trying to get the camera set up so that I can do a tutorial on her without having her up close to the computer and stuff like that. So, you know. Oh, I got you. So I had to get my tripod and a little everything else and stuff so that I can get my camera over there. So that now I can he's, contort he's myself. I'm really excited about being painted tonight. <laughs> Look at her. She's like, ah, what did I get myself into? No, she loves it. She can't yeah, get enough yeah. of it. <laughs> She's like, you owe me big time. <laughs> oh, well, if you've seen my profile pic, that's her. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're, you're so great. <laughs> she loves being painted. It's fun. So. Now we just got to figure out what we're going to yeah, paint her the as spider, tonight. The Spider Woman, that was pretty good. Oh yeah, she loved it. Yep. Even though she hates Spider Man. I do. <laughs> I do not like Spider Man. My uh, my phone is actually broken for some reason. Unless I'm using speakerphone, no one can hear my voice when I talk. So I have to go get that fixed. So. Uh. Yeah, well, I'm talking on speakerphone right now. <laughs> well, I mean, I have an alternate phone, but I got to put it on speakerphone in order to hear you. <laughs> Gotcha. This one's Magic Jack, so it plays right through the computer so everybody can hear you perfectly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I could have used my, um, I have Google Voice also. I could have used that, I guess. Yeah. But, I like uh, Google Voice. It's free. I know something that we got to do, though. We got to really get on the ball and see how many other face painters want to do, like, a um, Google Hangout live one time. Uh, oh, yeah, on a I'm Thursday. down. Me and Marcy, we do Google Hangouts all the time. But usually it's just us. Nobody can handle us, I guess. <laughs> oh, uh, I can handle you. Oh, okay, nice. I, I hung out with uh, Margie in uh, New Orleans the last day. Oh, yeah, she had a lot of fun there. Day after Lafette, uh, when everybody was going home, I had some time to kill, so we went down into the French Quarter and did a whole bunch of things and stuff. I had a great time. So. Yeah, cool. She's fun. Okay, so what do I need to paint this face as? What do you think? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, ask her. Ask her what she wants. Let's let's find out what she wants for once. Some spiders. She wants to sleep. I think she wants to sleep. She wants <laughs> spiders. Take spiders. Some new people gotta do you spiders. need some three D spiders. Some uh, pastel or type stuff, I guess. <laughs> okay, spiders. Or I you guys can just wrestle on the couch. That could be fun. <laughs> Hush, we already had that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jan wants a butterfly. I don't know. I think butterflies are a little outplayed. I think everybody does butterflies. What's new? What are people asking for now? Like, I don't know. Is there like a trend out there? There's not really uh, too much of a trend unless like a new movie comes out and then you got, you know, the Minions from Despicable well, Me 2. Right I've been seeing a lot of the, um, uh, what do they call it, the Minions. Yeah. I love Minions. In fact, my kid wants a Minion party for his birthday uh, in a couple weeks, so we'll try to find anything Minion right now. Okay, well, let's do a Minion eye on her forehead, and then maybe I'll do like a butterfly um, emerging from her nostril. And then maybe a spider crawling out of her eye socket on the other Eating side. The <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, first off, everybody knows. Oh, and uh, can you grab my bag? Go into my bag, uh, into that one pocket, and grab out the um, round sponges that I got. I picked up these round sponges from. Uh, Michael's. From Michaels, I picked up these round sponges from Michaels, 
Uh, they're Martha Stewart, everyday living, uh, crafty Dabbers. things. And they're daubers. But the great thing is, and I'll show them to you real quick. They come in a container. They're perfectly round. And they come in all different sizes. You got big one here, small one. And what's great is if you need to wash them out, even though they're in this plastic container, you can pull the sponges out all together. So you can easily, you know, if it's dirty on one side and you want to use the other side real quick for a different design, you can easily take it out, clean it out. It's all plastic, easy to clean and stuff. So I'm going to take the biggest one and I'm going to make the eye with that. And that should make things a lot quicker, a lot simpler. Let's see how bad I can screw this up. It'll be fine. We're all here. We're watching. Oh, thanks. That makes me feel <laughs> so much better. <laughs> and if you guys think you have a hard time on Faba TV doing stuff with cameras in the way and different things like that, try being where I'm at right now. Sitting on a couch with the camera facing her, me beside her Oops, facing the I, camera. I have to hang up for a second. I have another call. I'll call you back. Oh, okay. Bye. Well, like I said, if uh, <laughs> you think they have a hard time with the cameras at Faba TV, wait until you see what I have to deal with here. So, I'm loading up my sponge with white. Now, I can put it back in the container. Get my finger white in the process. Okay, and then I'm going to go and write in the middle just a little twist, push twist, and get that right there. Now, I had a little bit of gray in my uh, white because I normally use that white for um, mostly blending colors and stuff. I don't use it for doing a solid white base. But, um, I can get the basic shape down. Now I can always go in and take, you know, my number six Mark Reed brush, get some true white on there, excuse me. All that mountain lightning. And I can go in, I can make that more solid white. Kind of draw in some of that gray there. All right, so we have a nice white dot on our forehead. Next thing I need to do is I need to make the metal on the outside. So I'm going to take a little bit of black, mix it in with my white, get a nice medium tone gray going, and I'm going to take. Hopefully the camera doesn't shake too much. And I'm going to outline the circle. And I'm going to make that line thicker. There you go. Nice thick circle around it. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of brown. I'm still using my number six. I probably should be using a filbert or something. But I'm going to take a nice medium tone brown. And I'm going to create the strap right into the hairline, trying to make sure I get it even on both sides. Hard to tell from where I'm sitting. Turn your head a little bit. And fill that in. So 
So if anybody else wants to give a call in while I'm doing this tutorial, uh, talk to me about why face painting makes them happy or their most memorable moments in face painting, go ahead. Um, if not, uh, which paint did you want to see again? Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of dark brown. And if it's this paint you're talking about, it's that dark spot in the middle. I just mixed in a little bit of white. It had a nice well in it. So that's where I mix all my colors is in that well. And then I keep my solid white on the outside. I can use my sponge easily with that. Also, since it's a tag white, it's a larger container. So it's a little bit easier to uh, manipulate the uh, paint on the inside. So taking a darker brown, I'm going to go ahead and just outline on the edge of the eye and on the bottom of the strap and then I'm going to take my filbert just slightly damp with some paint on it with some dark brown on it I don't want it to be too uh, wet. I just want it enough to, you know, nice dry brown on it. And I'm using um, Fab Browns on this, and I'm going to pull it from where the eye is. Kind of just give it a little bit of depth. I don't know if you can see that on here. Um, <laughs> Turn your head a little bit, just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of pulling it out, kind of blending it in. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to take and um, on the minion eyes, they're usually like an orangish color or a brownish, uh, they don't really have colored eyes. So I'm going to take a bronze and this is going to give it dimension. I'm taking the bronze, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to make a circle in the center, making sure I have enough bronze on there. It'll probably blend in with the white a little bit. That's okay. Doesn't matter. That'll give it depth. If you want and it starts to blend, just kind of bring it from the outside in. So it looks kind of like that. Can you see it? Right there. That little dot. Okay. So with that, I'm going to take my number four Mark Reed brush and I'm going to take a little bit of dark brown and I'm not going to have it really wet on my brush just just enough on there that I can get it off to do kind of an outline on it so it blends in nicely and kind of like pull it in a little bit. So it's starting to give it the appearance of an actual eye. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black. And this is where it's going to help you to not make a complete circle so that when you put your highlights into the eye, 
it's not going to be overpowering. So you pick up your black, and you're going to do something like, um, almost like you don't want to connect it all the way up together. You want to make that pupil. Try to make it as round as possible. And then you're going to come back and you're going to make a little dip. So it's sort of like a dark moon. A black moon. So you come up with that. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it? Don't move your eyebrows. Can you see it? Okay. So. <laughs> Eyes. That was my other thing. Eyes. Remember? Yeah, she she wanted me to do eyes on eyelids. I think I'm going to save that for another day when I can get um, when I have a better setup than I do now. And uh, maybe I'll do that next week, next Thursday. But as far as this, we're going to go ahead and right where that little empty spot is, I'm going to go ahead and put a nice white dot and then another one right below it. So it gives it more of an appearance of an actual reflection in an eye. Now I'm going to take my filbert. And with that same white, with the black in it, or the, or the gray, I'm going to pull just a little bit. Kind of mix it in with the other white. Because I want to make a lighter gray. I don't want to make it too dark of a gray. I need to give that eye some depth. So knowing that the highlights here, I'm going to have a shadow of the eye right about here. And I'm just taking this as dry, leaving a little bit of a white edge. I'm just creating that depth. See what I mean? See what I mean? Okay. So now that that's done, I need to get the highlights going on everything else. So with the actual metal part, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, mix it in with a little bit of that black so I get a nice light gray color, very light. I'm going to take that. I want to make sure it's nice and thick. And where we would assume that the light is hitting is where we are going to put the white. So I'm assuming that the light is hitting right about here. On the metal. And it is also hitting since this is a three-dimensional, that it is hitting right about here. Now don't worry, it may look kind of wonky at first. You're going to go in with a thin black line and you're going to outline certain things but you want to get these highlights down first. So now that I got that, I'm going to take a little bit of the black and mix it in with that dark gray that I have in the middle of my white so it makes it a darker color. Really dark gray. But I don't want it to be completely black. I just want it to be a darker gray. Are you watching kids? Are you watching? Are you watching? Are you watching?
So you get something like that. Yay! All right. Now I'm trying to go for a more realistic looking one. So I'm mixing in a little bit of black with my darkest brown. Just so I can outline these straps. Just like so. I don't think I want to do anything else with the actual eyepiece. But I am going to take a little bit of black. I'm going to put some rivets on the eyepiece or on the straps. And then finally I'm going to take some white. And I'm going to give my strap a nice little highlight, probably around top of the rivets. Pick up a little bit more white, nice heavy white. I'm going to go ahead and where these highlights are, I'm just going to kind of add in just a little bit more in certain areas. I don't want it to be too prominent, just so it pops. Make sure that that highlight in the eye nice and bold so there you go can you see it no, no, not too far no no stop just like that she can't see the screen so I'm having a controller <laughs> all right so there you go that's a minion eye you could always go yellow around it do whatever you want I know I've seen people do um, uh, full faces and stuff. Uh, I'm just not ready for that. This is my first time doing a minion. No, I did not paint the shadow all the way around. You only paint the shadow where the light isn't going to hit the um, object. If you know what I mean. Uh, so if the light's going to hit right here... I'm going to put the shadow right here and I'm just going to make it kind of fade in to where the light is. And in fact, if I want, I can take a uh, lot of white, a heavier white, and where this is I can put, you know, maybe some highlight into the eye right above it right up there if you can see it so yep that's it and if you need to you can replay this video um, on YouTube because after I'm done with the show you'll be able to uh, watch it again uh, I do record all my shows so okay now you wanted to see a butterfly well I've done plenty of butterflies but I've never done one emerging from a person's nose I don't think I'm gonna do that I think I'm gonna do one I, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a butterfly grabbing a hold of her eyelid right there Kinda, it's like grasping a hold of your eyelid. 
So for that, I'm going to start off with a little bit of yellow, just as a base. And then we'll throw colors on top of that. Well, I'm going to take my number six, uh, Mark Reed. Is this side easier? No, nope, this side's going to be easier. You know? So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to first, I'm going to make the wings. Now, depending on how the butterfly is facing, depends on how the wings are going to look. So I'm going to make it to where the butterfly is facing me and the butt ends going out that way. So I'm going to start off not even touching the eye. I'm going to come out and I'm going to have the wing like that. And then I'm going to take the smaller wing. Have it like that. I could always add in the second wing in the background. I'm just going to color that in. Now don't worry if you lose where everything's at, you'll be able to find it again. That's not a problem. I'm now going to come in with a little bit of orange. Has anybody else noticed that the chameleon orange is really hard to pick up? It's, you know, it dries out really fast and it, it's just hard to get. So, uh, base color of a wing or base color of anything needs to be almost your lightest color uh, because when you add darker colors on top of it, um, they'll pop out better. Um, if you go with a darker color first and you go to lighter colors, then you're not going to um, get a good blend. Uh, it's, it's going to like, if you have um, black down and you try to put white on top of it, you don't get white, you get something like a dark gray or something. So I'm going to take this orange, I'm going to kind of smudge it into that yellow get her hair out of the way I'm doing this to give it a little bit of depth and dimension I want it to have some variation to it it doesn't have to look perfect you'll see why for the under wing kinda like that now I'm going to take my number four, Mark Reed, with some black. And I'm going to have her look up. I'm going to go ahead and put the body in. And then I'm going to have these little legs coming up to her eye. Like they're grasping a hold. And then some little antenna. Okay, and then I'm going to start outlining the butterfly. All right, you can see that now. And then the wing that's kind of in the back. Now I'm going to give this wing some detail. I want it to be a little thicker on the outside edge. Give it some life like that. So it gives more of an appearance of a butterfly. I'm 
we're going to take a little bit of white. Just simple butterfly here, nothing more than orange, yellow, black, and white. We're going to come in and we're going to put in some dots in where the colored areas are. just detail and uh, these pictures will be posted on my uh, Catman Dude face and body art page which you'll find the link on my uh, YouTube channel so you can watch it from there I like Mark Reed brushes too they've lasted me for a while but um, each person has their own technique of using brushes so what you uh, see Mark Reed do with these brushes is because he specifically designed them for how he uses them we have to learn how he uses them, but our techniques are all different. So, if you want to use a brush that works for you, either learn all of them and the techniques in order to use them, or design your own brush. Because just because it's a Mark Reed brush doesn't mean it's a great brush. It means it's a great brush for Mark Reed because Mark Reed designed them to the way he uses them you know if, if that makes any sense but if you want to be a really good artist you know how to use everybody's brushes and everybody's paints and all the different techniques and you make it your own that's the best way to do it now with this I do want to take and I'm gonna put a little bit of black with a lot of water onto my hand and it's still too, too dark. So I'm going to rinse out my brush, leave it wet, and I'm going to make a wash out of it. Do you see that? Okay. So it's just a wash. It's just a very watered down black. This is going to allow me to create shadows with right here. So on this, I'm going to and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the video. You'll be able to see it in the picture that I'll post. Still a little bit too much black on it. So there we go. That's better. And you want to create kind of a shadow effect on the face. And there you go. There's there's a butterfly <laughs> hanging off of her eye. No. Chin up. Over. Smile. <laughs> and she's got a butterfly hanging off of her eye. All right. Now I've got about five minutes left. Um, the way I hold a brush is I hold it like I hold a pencil. So if I'm writing something, it's the same process as holding a pencil. You know? You know what I mean? It also allows you to manipulate your hand, do different things, you know? But holding it like a pencil, you can do more. And when you use your pinky, you can do a lot with your hand in one area with that pinky right there it helps out a lot um, of course your pinky gets kinda dirty make sure you clean it and stuff alright so with <coughs> five minutes left I'm gonna do a quick spider design on the side kind of um, kind of a pasture design and uh, mainly because 
this is the last year for any workshops you can get from him. Next year he will be unavailable. He may show up at some conventions, but he's not doing workshops or classes anymore. So uh, there will be plenty of other people that will be doing his kind of designs and stuff. Um, his are great. They're quick. They're simple. They're easy. You just take some black and you make a body. All right. You make a black widow. You make a head, a little bit smaller. Okay. No, I'm not going to make a black widow. Because if I was going to do that, I would have left an hourglass symbol in there. Um, <laughs> they can see our Black Widow on my profile. Um, so then, the rest is all nothing but teardrops and um, flicks. It's very easy to do. It's not that hard. So you're going to do four really tight teardrops on either side. Almost like there's no space in between them. In fact, there is no space in between them. But that'll that'll change once you put the white on there and really make it pop. Okay, so you have those eight teardrops on the you know, four on either side. You're going to take and you're going to make four more teardrops push dab teardrops, but you're going to put them into different areas, okay? First off, on the two bottom ones, you're going to do straight down, teardrop, teardrop. The next one's over, you're going to go out a little bit, you know, kind of angled, make your teardrop. The two top ones, you're going to do teardrops going up, Okay, and the last two, you're going to do those going out a little bit from it. Now it kind of looks like a spider, but it's still missing some points. And this is where it, you know, really makes it pop and it really makes it look great. You're going to take from the two going down, flick out get points long points same thing flick out flick out two top ones flick out and kind of into the center so you get a nice leg and then the last ones and you get a nice spider like that see She's got a ponytail, so it makes it easier for me to control her head. <laughs> I would never do that to my girlfriend. Yes, you would. Shh. Hush. All right. Now, here comes the fun part, and I'm going to take my number four Mark Reed. That was my number six that I used. I'm going to take my number four. I'm going to load it up with some white. Make sure I get a nice, good point on there. I'm going to come down where the head is and I'm going to do some little eyes. You don't have to put all eight in if you don't want. And I'm going to do a highlight, a little round highlight where the light would hit his head. I'm going to do that on the body too with the highlight. And then instead of doing teardrops, you're going to do flicks to create the effect of highlights on the legs. So you're going to flick anywhere where you would think that the light is going to hit the leg. Just flicking up. You know, flicking towards the spider. Okay, and then the last little flick that you're going to do is those little legs.
Okay, so you get yourself a nice spider there. All right, and you can put a drop shadow behind him. You can put a spider web on him. You can do whatever you want. But all right, you can sit back. But that's the end of uh, my show. Thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate uh, everybody who viewed it and those that didn't. You can check it out, you know, live on, or not live, but check out the recording on my YouTube channel as I set my camera back up on my computer. <laughs> so thanks, guys, and uh, tune in next week. Hopefully I'll have a lot more um, going on. I'll try to plan it out ahead of time so it's not too um, wonky. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, check you guys out next week. Oh. Yes, don't worry about the teardrops. It's the highlights that make the difference. Thanks, Jan, for watching and see you guys next week. Bye.